Okay. Um, so in terms of the common skills, um, there are some common denominators that cross our treatment for DGBIs when we're talking about psychological interventions. Um, they almost all will include um, some psychoeducation. So that's a huge piece. So some of that education, you know, in the very first uh, lecture, I think that um, Brad Derson um, gave. So that's one example of some psychoeducation and how to talk about symptoms, how to understand them. Most components of treatment are going to include some school and some social functioning as well. And so we're already goes beyond information straight into behavior. So it's about the functioning piece. And then there's also a big component of relaxation skills, um, as Julie said. Um, and then there, depending on the age of the child, we can also incorporate a lot of different cognitive skills. And so for a really young child who's in, you know, maybe kindergarten or first grade, second grade, you know, they might not have as much of the cognitive component, but we might really lean more heavily on the behavioral side in there. Um, the first set of skills that I really want to highlight are these relaxation skills. And uh, these are skills that we as GI psychologists get very excited about. Um, and we get very excited about teaching people how to do them correctly. So some of this actually starts with the psychoeducation of teaching people what is going on in the GI tract and in the body when there is pain or when there is nausea present and some of that awareness and arousal and education around the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. I'm not going to go into the whole spiel right now, um, but I do want to emphasize that making sure that people are learning relaxation techniques that are actually going to effectively reduce the level of autonomic nervous system arousal is critical. Having somebody do a breath and say, I did breathing and it didn't help. Um, we know that that's not actually going to calm down the nervous system in any substantial way. And in fact, could actually trigger more symptoms, more stress if it's a, a really thoracic breath. And so teaching kids how to do a diaphragmatic breath is really critical. Um, and this is where we can teach them how to do this with biofeedback and where if you're thinking about a school setting and using these skills in a school setting, you know, sometimes kids will either need to um, use the nurse's office to lie down if they're still at that stage of practicing breathing, or maybe they bring in their biofeedback device if they, whether they have a little card or a really fancy device, um, something that's going to help them sort of map what is happening in my autonomic nervous system and what do I need to do to take care of myself in there. Um, diaphragmatic breathing is um, probably the most significant one that all GI patients need to learn. Um, and I'm just very hardcore about this, uh, but you can also, of course, have some other relaxation skills in there. Guided imagery is another great one. Um, things that um, are going to help the system calm down. Um, these are skills that we think of as really sort of dimmer switch skills. So they are skills that are going to help the person calm their physical symptoms down, uh, lowering heart rate, um, and that's really the goal of those skills right there. Um, and they are skills that patients need to learn not just once, but they need to learn them and then do them again and do them again and do them again. 